Welcome to Minecraft Circuits in Real Life. This is going to be Hello Breadboard. Welcome to Wires. We're going to actually do some pretty fundamental stuff here. Uh, we're going to take our battery, we're going to grab a breadboard, we're going to grab some of the wires out of the kit, and we're going to grab the LEDs, and we're also going to use some of the resistors. And these are about 330 uh, ohm resistors, so they're low, like a very low ohmage. Uh, low resistance. So anyway, we'll go into more of those details later. But what I want to make sure of is that uh, we talk about our battery, our power sources. So in Minecraft, our power sources are inputs, when you flip a switch or a lever, uh, redstone torch, redstone block, these things all generate power as part of their operation. So the most equivalent to what we have in real life is the redstone block. One redstone block does the power about an area of about 16 blocks out. Well, in real life, we have the same issue. We have a, a 1.5 volt battery, and just a couple couple things are really important. Is that on the battery we have a positive end, a positive end, a negative end, and they're actually labeled, and they're labeled with plus and minus. So if I draw out a little quick little shape, I'll have a plus end and a minus end, and the idea is that I want to get the energy to flow from one end to the other, and the only way to do that is to have a closed circuit. So if I did a closed circuit, I could take a wire and move it from one end to the other, but what would, what would happen here, and it's not visual, but what would happen is that the energy would flow, but at some point the energy flow starts to actually heat up the wire. And you know, in, with enough batteries, like a whole battery pack, you start actually feeling that heat. But one of the things here is we're working with a 1.5 volt battery. And that's basically the, the unit. So like in Minecraft, a redstone block powers the 16, um, 16 length redstone um, wire. Uh, in real life, essentially, this 1.5 volt would power a certain amount just the same way. And each of our devices, like an LED is an output and it requires a certain amount of energy in order to operate. And then if you give it too much energy, uh, it has a behavior that actually breaks the LED. So we're going to actually work our way through that. So let's take a, take a look at wires and these guys. So what I've got is, now if I take two batteries, what I now have is a second battery and it has a minus and a plus, it's 1.5 volts, and they're, if they're connected, I have to, I want to connect the loop bigger, so I want to get rid of that part, and then I want to connect my loop up here. But, what we're going to do in our setup is put in, what I'm going to do is the, the symbol for like an, an LED here, so, we're going to put an LED inside this loop. So, if I take a single battery, and I have my wires, and I hook them up, now I have this, uh, the configuration of a positive and negative end and one LED. So, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to try to take the one end of the LED and touch it to the other end here, and once I cross these, cross these over, what happens is we're going to see what happens when that does. So you see how difficult it is to manage the wires without the breadboard. So what we're going to do is use the breadboard to help instead of having to hold everything together and keep things from floating around, we're going to use this breadboard in order to do that. Uh, and you might also think, hey, why is this called a breadboard? Well, it turns out they're originally a breadboard, nails and wires wrapped around them. So that sort of makes uh, a breadboard, but in this case what we have is a much smaller one. And the way this breadboard works is like the ribs of a skeleton. They have little lines, and those little lines are wires. So when I actually put a wire into um, the breadboard, each row is connected. So I'll take the top row here, and I'll put a wire here. And now these two are actually connected to one another. So that would make a closed circuit loop. This would make a closed circuit loop with um, battery in it. And it would have all the effects of like heating up and the whole deal. But what we want to do is see, and you can already tell my wires are kind of holding a lot more still. So 
with that, I'm going to actually take two rows. And what that does is it extends the wire from this guy is uh, connected into the top row. This one's connected to the next row. So whatever power I provide here, they're going to extend into the wires that touch. Because I can take two wires, touch the two wires together, and now I just have a longer wire. It has a little bit more resistance, but a tiny bit more resistance because of the, the length of the wire is like double. And it just is a longer distance to travel, but it's really small, so it's no big deal. So our first experiment here is to use our breadboard, connect these two rows. I want to get the battery hooked on. So I look here, okay, the negative is going to be connected to the yellow wire, and the positive is connected to the white wire. And now that I've got that held in place, I can put my... Um, LED in position. And the idea with this LED in position is that we're going to figure out, okay, well, will it light? And there's a couple reasons what's, for what's going to happen. I'm going to plug it in this direction, nothing's going to happen. I'm going to plug it in the opposite way, and nothing's going to happen. And so what's going on is that we're only using one battery, 1.5 volts. That's not enough to actually power the um, the uh, LED. So what I'm going to do is, in the series, I'm going to actually take the two things and then add them together. And once I've added them together, now I've got this closed loop. So I'm going to put the LED back, I'm going to take the positive, which is the white wire, and then the negative on that wire. And once I've done that, I can connect it up and our LED lights. And you can see the LED light when I tap it or don't tap it, but basically it's firing up. Now, one of the things that's really neat is now I'm actually simulating turning something on and off. If I had a button here, this is where I would put a button to turn on and off a project. But remember, it, everything's going to fall around. All of our various things are going to drop and roll around and get in, get in our way. So we're going to organize our work on a breadboard so it's easier to handle. Now, what we've learned is one... Uh, battery, 1.5 battery, isn't powerful enough to run our LED. Two of them is, po is powerful enough to run the LED, but what we're going to do is we're going to use four of these in order to run all of our projects. So we would actually take another battery, the minus plus, take another battery, uh, minus plus here, and this is 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts. So what we have as an outcome is 6 volts. So that 6 volts it's sort of like taking three redstone batteries and being able to go, or four redstone batteries, putting them together and going a much longer distance. Uh, and it just makes a bigger battery. So it would be like if you could take one redstone block and stack four of them up and it actually power uh, four times uh, the distance that you originally had. So in our case, we're providing a little more voltage and that's going to power, say, more than one LED because not only do they consume energy, um, they will, they act, will, so they, when they emit light, it's changing the state so that the energy is going from electricity to like the photons that we see, and that transition is, takes a little bit of energy. So let me set up this battery pack so that we're ready to go with that. So I'm going to put this guy in, slide and pop that, and then I'll go here, and there's a little positive sign that says I'm going to slide in and pop that. So each positive negative on the battery pack is in good shape. So now, we're going to do something. I'm going to take this out and say, okay, well, we've got wires hooked up on this um, on this board, and we're going to use our breadboard to fire the wire power up. So I want to double check. The negative side is the short end, and the positive side is the long end. So once I hook this in, I'll put this down. I'll put the negative to the negative, and we'll put the positive to the positive. Now. Let's see, let's see what happens here. This is sort of an experiment. And we'll put that in and whoops. So you just should have just seen a big old bright flash and there was actually a sound of it going sizzle. So oh and there's a little bit of a um, stinky smell. So you so when you're when you're breadboarding and working with electronics, you use all of your senses. Because when things don't smell right, sound right, or look right, there's a problem. <laughs> so in our case, this is what happened. So what we've done is we've we're using a, 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 a you know six volts. We know that our thing works at three volts and doesn't blow up. But in order to power our other projects, we want to have a six volt power supply, and that's what our batteries are doing. So I'm going to move this out of the way because that's no good anymore. 
And then what, what we're going to do is we're going to use a resistor. And the resistor puts basically more puts more block in the way. So like having a long wire, twice as long wire, a 50 you know million light year wire, whatever, something really long, your your energy isn't going to flow through more because it doesn't it just can't push the energy through that much uh, stuff. So in our case, we're going to throw a resistor in. So this is a compromise we have to make in real life that you don't have to do in Minecraft. So the resistor is actually going to bring the voltage down a little bit so that the LED doesn't exceed its safe sort of optimal use. So the, so the resistor, good news with it, is it's what they call symmetric. So I can put it in either direction, and we'll actually test that. So with that in place, I've got my uh, LED here. I'm going to put the negative short end, and I'm going to overlap it. So what you'll see is I have two rows. Everything's in its own row except for the middle part here. So now I have the resistor and the negative in the in line. So I have my power, my ground, then I have my resistor, I have my LED, and then coming out that I want to include my um, include my battery. So once I do that, it fires right up. And I let it slip out and put it right back in. Uh, if I get this just right, there it goes, it holds in place. And now we have a working torch. In this case, it's blue because we can pick different colors. So we have red, green, and blue, various ones in this in the, um, the set. So, all right. So the deal is, is that my my wire coming from the battery, the negative, goes to this end of the LED, and then if I take it out, everything turns off because I broke the connection. So the other part is, if I flip this around the other direction, I'll just put it back in, and you'll see the LED come right back on because our connection is there. So what's happened now is if I do a little bit is that I have what we call the negative side. Then we're gonna run a wire from the negative to a picture of our resistor. So there's a squiggly for resistance. And then I have like an LED, which has like a particular shape and it's gonna go all the way to positive. So with that in place, um, we have a circuit that loops around. So, I'll just draw that in there. Okay. So what we've what we're able to do now is we're able to power LEDs, create a circuit, and put a resistor in that keeps everything from blowing up on us. So, um, this is basically the the we're holding our project together with the breadboard. We're powering our torches up. We're making some compromises in reality to make things power up properly. And that would be the sort of introduction to the breadboard um, and then how the uh, LED fires up. Now just a couple of quick notes. I'm just going to draw. So the, this breadboard, you'll see it has a left and a right side. And there's a row one, a row two, row three, row four, all the way to the bottom row. And I have another row, same thing matching the other side. And you'll see right here down the middle is a gap. So these don't, these gaps don't touch each other. So there's no connection in the middle. So I can put a circuit on this side and a circuit on that side. So when we work with our Minecraft circuits in real life, we're going to work in the orientation of left to right. And I'm going to generally put the ground on the left-hand side and the power on the right-hand side. Or depending on the circuit, I might reverse it. But basically, they're all going to be the same direction. And we can put circuits at the bottom or circuits at the top. So our breadboard is actually kind of like two sets of wires, top and bottom. So anyway, we are now able to basically power up an LED. So I can just put the resistor down. I have to keep track of positive and negative. So if I change the other, other way around is I can have the positive end go here. And once I do that, I have to reverse so that the negative goes into this side. And now my positive goes into the left side over here and we're fired up. And again, the nice part with this is that the breadboard holds things still so that they don't fall apart and the batteries don't roll around and you secure your project. So anyway, thank you uh, for going through the session of Minecraft Circuits in real life and we're going to come back and we'll the button.